Hi, I'm Ross. Welcome to Biker Talk and another motorcycle review. There is no doubt that electric vehicles are the way of the future. And as technology improves, we'll see EVs that are lighter, faster, with more power and better battery capacity, which will result in more range and importantly, extremely low running costs. They might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'd say they're here to stay. The big question with EVs is, are we there yet in 2022? Before we go any further, if you wanna see more content from us, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And also a big thanks to our channel review sponsor, Motorcycle Stuff. There's a link in the description to their online store. When I first had the offer from Super Soco here in Australia to test ride and review their CPX electric scooter, I must admit it was with a little bit of amusement that I accepted the invitation. Cards on the table. I've been a motorcyclist for over 25 years and I've never really been a massive fan of scooters. I'm not saying that they don't have their place, but for the type of riding that I typically do, they've never really been for me. In fact, the only time I've ridden or been on a scooter has been in either Thailand, Vietnam or Bali. And I must admit, in places like that, with such a dense population, riding a scooter makes a hell of a lot of sense. But in the southern suburbs of Sydney, surrounded by bushland and twisty road, maybe not so much. I decided to accept the challenge and find out what the Super Soco CPX is all about. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and I'll let you know whether I think the Super Soco CPX is a good bike for a pie run. And I can't believe I managed to keep a straight face while I said that. The CPX is powered by a single-sided swing arm motor for 4,000 watts of emission-free power that is comparable to a 125cc scooter. The single-sided swing arm motor features a split and fast attach design. Super Soco claim that the wheel can be detached in 55 seconds, so that makes it pretty convenient for servicing, should it need any maintenance. Someone might be able to fill me in on how you service an electric motor in the comments below. The CPX that I had was the single battery version, which in eco mode will give you 70 kilometers of range. Heads up though, eco mode caps the top speed at 45 kilometers an hour, which is probably okay for around an urban area, but not much fun anywhere else. I had it in either normal or sport mode, and the best range I got out of it was about 50 kilometers. With the dual battery, Super Soco claim the range is about 130 kilometers, and I'll go more into the whole range versus rider mode debate later in the video. There is no ABS, but it does have a combined braking system with a 240mm disc on the front and a 180mm disc on the rear. It has keyless ignition, an alarm and a wheel lock for added security. The CPX has radial ply puncture resistant tyres, a 16 inch front and a 14 inch rear. The seat height is only 776mm, which is on the lower side, but because of the width of the seat, it does feel a lot higher. But at only 107 kilograms, it's really easy to move around. There's a reverse function to make moving it around the garage or parking space really easy. And it also has a forward function that when engaged, moves the bike forward at a walking pace. It's easy to use, but because the CPX is so light, I'll be honest, it's probably not necessary. There's a claimed maximum speed of 90 kilometers per hour, but I did get it to 99 Ks. Admittedly, it was downhill with a tailwind and before dinner. And I reckon if I had skipped lunch, I may have cracked a ton. There's a lithium ion battery which is removable, meaning if you're commuting, you can remove the battery for charging while you're at work, making it even more economical to run because you'd be using your boss's power to charge it up, win-win. Charging is a really simple process. Switch off the kill switch, unplug the battery and lift it out. Charge time is three to four hours, which as a commuter or urban runabout is pretty good. There's a note in the manual that says to make sure you do a full charge of the battery every two months. It has a large LCD screen that gives you all of the information you need, including rider mode, speed, battery status, through the advanced battery management system. The LED lighting is quite bright and I actually thought it looked like a really nice configuration. The CPX has a USB outlet for charging your phone and there's also a useful storage unit for your keys or your phone. The price of the CPX in Australia is $7,690 for the single battery version and $9,990 for the dual battery version and it comes with a 2 year or 10,000 km warranty. The Super Soco CPX really surprised me. With a 16 inch front wheel, it has excellent handling at speeds of up to about 70 km per hour and it is really easy to ride. In flat conditions it has a pretty good amount of power 
You're not going to be racing off other vehicles at the lights and the speed increase is gradual, but in and around urban conditions, it's absolutely fine. I actually found that the integrated brakes are pretty good, although I did find that it was pretty easy to lock up the rear as there is no ABS. But once I got used to it, it was no issue. The seat is really well padded, making it extremely comfortable, and there's plenty of room to move around forward and back to get a really comfy riding position. I had the CPX for about two months all up, and I must admit, there was more than one occasion when I had to do a run to the shops to pick up a few things where I took it instead of the car. It's light to get in and out of the garage, easy to park at the shops, and it had a bit of storage where the second battery would normally be. All up, there's a fair bit to like. It's a relatively large scooter, so it has great road presence, but the main thing is that it costs practically nothing to run, because I would charge it up during the day using the solar panels on the roof of my house. In theory, giving me about 70 kilometers of emission-free riding. So the CPX did have some really nice touches, but there's a few things for me that I wasn't a big fan of, mostly because of where I live and the type of riding that I do. First up, battery life and range. I mentioned the best range I got out of it was about 50 kilometers or so. I rode it in normal mode and then switched to sport mode when I needed a little bit more power. Riding it in this way seemed to give me a reasonable balance between usable power and range. Although it would be nice just to leave it in sport mode. The screen seemed to direct airflow directly at the top of my head. It might be okay if you're a little bit shorter or a little bit taller than I am, but riding along at a decent clip, the top of my head did cop a bit of a buffeting. It must be said though that this is not really the type of bike you're going to be riding around at 80 km per hour all the time. With the single battery version, you have a little bit of storage. But if you go with the dual battery version, then that storage disappears. Yes, you could add a top box, but that's going to add even more weight and therefore affect battery life. So if they can sort out better battery range with the single battery and keep a bit of the underseat storage, that would be ideal. The seat. Even though it was really comfortable, it was very, very wide. And because of the width, I needed to slide a little bit forward to get both feet flat on the ground at a standstill. It probably needs to be that wide to fit in the batteries. It's not a massive issue, and I think that even a shorter rider would be okay because of how light the CPX is. Ground clearance is pretty low at 145 millimeters, so it was pretty easy to scrape the center stand on some corners. The main problem I found with the CPX is that power decreases on an incline. I had a couple of sections of road that were 80 kilometer zones, and the CPX handled them fine until I had to climb a bit of a hill. In these cases, the speed would drop quite quickly, which was quite a shock the first time it happened. Because when the road is flat, the CPX is relatively zippy. The CPX is equal parts reliable, fun, and terrifying if you live in a hilly area. As an urban commuter though, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. But at just over $7,500, it's a fair bit more than the equivalent 125cc scooter or motorcycle. But on the other hand, it costs virtually nothing to run if you have solar panels on your roof, or better still, use your boss's power when you recharge it at the office. So, would I take it for a pie run? Well, I guess you could take any bike for a pie run. But for this one, the pie shop would have to be pretty close by. If you live in the city and use it to run about, then it's not a bad option. And I reckon it won't be long till manufacturers have sorted out better battery life and power delivery. What this has taught me though, is that scooters can be a lot of fun. I'm not ruling one out for some time down the track. For the right purpose, they make so much sense. Let me know what you think of the Super Soco CPX. Have I got it about right, or am I way off the mark regarding EVs? I'm keen to get on some more electric bikes, so when I do, I'll be sure to bring you another review. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video and would like to see some more review content, then hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I have plenty more reviews coming up, so until then, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.